I'm Andy Adams, editor of Canadian Yachting Magazine, and with me today is John Gullick. He is the manager of government and special programs for the Canadian Power and Sail Squadrons. Good morning, John. Good morning, Andy. Um, I wanted to ask you something important, which is that there are people across Canada who need to have and should have a VHF radio for their boat. Right. But in the last few years, there have been some additions to this. It's a thing called digital selective calling. Correct. And in order to have this set up on your boat, you have to have a thing called an MMSI. John, tell us about what an MMSI is and how you get it. Okay. It's, it's basically, it's an identity number, a maritime mobile service identity number. It's like your phone number on your cell phone. So you get the, the, this number from, uh, from Industry Canada, you program it into your uh, VHF radio, whether it's a fixed, fixed on the dash radio or whether it's a handheld uh, with uh, digital selective calling capability and, and a lot of handhelds have that now. Um, the, uh, the MMSI essentially allows people to contact you through their radio with digital selected calling. They can, they can program your MMSI number in, hit a button, it'll, it'll call you, and then you can hit the button and, and answer it, and then go to a working channel uh, and do whatever you need to do. But it's the it's, best way to describe it is like a phone number. And it, and it works very similar to a phone number in your cell phone. My understanding is that a certain percentage of people who've bought one of the newer VHF radios than, that has this capability, a certain percentage have not set this up. Is that true? Correct. Uh, it, you have to set it up. You actually have to fill out a form and it goes to Industry Canada and they will issue the number. If it's a permanently fixed radio, there is information about the vessel. So the radio is now tied to the vessel. Type of vessel, size of vessel, uh, defining colors, etc., so that you know somebody doing a search could actually visually see it. The license number on the on the vessel, name if it's a registered vessel, um, so that they could actually find you. It also uh, needs to be connected to a working GPS, and uh, some of the radios actually now come with with the built-in GPS. But you'll hook it up to your chart plotter or whether with your working GPS. As soon as you hit. The, the, the button. There's a little flip up window. You flip it up, you hit the button, it sends out a digital signal and uh, gives all the information that's, that's built into the system uh, and, and it keeps going out until somebody responds to the signal. And um, so you have to know how to, how to technically use that system. Radios uh, that have been manufactured in the United States, which is where you know, most of the stuff comes up, from, from into Canada, I think since 1989, uh, all radios have had to have been digital selective calling capable, and now a lot of handhelds. Now handhelds might not be uh, attached to one craft, because by their very nature, you can use it on your main vessel, you can use it on your on your uh, uh, you know your inflatable, right. uh, your little uh, you know your kayak, whatever. Uh, so there so there is a, a capability when you fill out the form of of actually having you know as much information as possible and have an MMSI on your handheld that has digital selective calling capability. So a guy who goes into a marine chandlery is probably not the guy we're talking to. I think I'm talking to the guy who's gone into a mass merchandiser, uh, right. you know, a Walmart or a whatever, and he's picked something up off the shelf. There's no salesperson to help or guide him. and and. He may just think, hey, I want the radio, but all I'm really ever going to do is listen. I'm just going to put it on my boat. I don't go boating that often. So, so maybe they don't bother setting this up. Is that a fallacy? A bad move? A bad move. Because, you know, what happens if you've got the, you know, somebody is looking at the radio, whatever, they flip the little thing up, they hit the red button. Uh, part of it's programmed, part of it's not. And, you know, all of a sudden, you know, all heck breaks loose. And uh, that's actually happened here at the Toronto Boat Show a number of years ago. Um, the OPP here got a call from Coast Guard saying, we've had this emergency call up in the Halliburton area. It's January, Halliburton. <laughs> it's pretty cold and hard up there. And so th they called the marina and they managed to find somebody. The boat was down here. So the dealer had brought the boat down here, put it in the show, somebody, 
on the boat, said, oh, this is Nina, I'm gonna push this little red button. They push the button, out goes the emergency call, and so someone's looking for the boat, and, and the, last, the last location that was programmed into the machine was the marina in Halliburton. So that's where the boat was, not down here in, in Toronto, the boat show. <laughs> So yeah, you really have to you really have to know. And since 2005, CPS, uh, the course that we teach, you you have to learn about digital selective calling. It's not an option. People who had their cards prior to 2005, they were good for life. They're still good. Um, the law doesn't require that you have to have a restricted operator certificate maritime with a digital selective calling endorsement. However. Anybody who's come to us since 2005, it's not an option. They get it, they get a card with the, the, the DSC endorsement. All of our instructors all have the same endorsements. They all know about digital selective calling and they will teach that part of the manual. So, the way to get this all straightened around, make sure that you're taking full advantage of your radio's uh, capabilities in terms of, of safety and, and yep. communications. How do they get in touch with the Power Squadron to sign up for a course? Uh, website, uh, www.cps-ecp.ca uh, will get us to our website. Uh, Information ab about our courses, all of our range of courses, all of our squadrons, where you can find them, who's offering what. Uh, and it'll also, there's a phone number there. If, you, you know, if you've got a question you can't get answered, give our office a, a call. And uh, it's a free call across the country and we'll do our best to answer all your questions. Fantastic. So www.cps.ecp dash dash ecp dot ca dot ca we'll do that again. Just Google Canadian Power and Sales Squadrons. That's a great idea. I'm Andy Adams, <laughs> editor of Canadian Yachting Magazine. John Gullick, thanks so much. Hey, nice to see you.